Micah chapter 2, we read, Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, against this family I am devising disaster, from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk haughtily, for it will be a time of disaster. In that day, they shall take up a torn saw against you, and mourn bitterly, and say, We are utterly ruined. He changes the portion of my people, how he removes it from me. To an apostate he allots our fields. Therefore you have none to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Should this be said, O house of Jacob, has the Lord grown impatient? Are these his deeds? Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? But lately my people have risen up as an enemy. You strip the rich robe from those who pass by trustingly, with no thought of war. The women of my people you drive out from their delightful houses. From their young children you take away my splendor forever. Arise and go, for this is no place to rest, because of uncleanness that destroys with the grievous destruction. If a man should go about and utter wind and lie, saying, I will preach to you wine and strong drink, he would be the preacher for these people. I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture, a noisy multitude of men. He who opens the bridge goes before them. They break through and pass the gate, going out by it. Their king passes on before them, the Lord at their head. So, the focus here is about the people who do evil, that a day is coming, a day of doom, in the first five, five verses. A day of doom is coming your way. Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil on their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it, because it is in, their power, in the power of their hand to do so. In Micah chapter 1, what we've been doing before, We've seen that the sin there was primarily against God. Now here in 2, we are seeing that the sin is changing a bit because it's now upon fellow men. That's what you're doing. What you're doing to other people is what God is calling you into account for. You plan evil in your beds. And when you wake up in the morning, you have the power to do it and so you perform it. Plotting and performing evil. That the people here who are the oppressors, whether they are the leaders, they are people in authority, or they are people with some wealth, say the middle class, they are being told a time of war is coming, a time of mourning, and a time now for your disaster. Your end is being mentioned. When we were going through Proverbs, if you remember, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, it says that these people who are wicked, they cannot sleep unless they do evil. They are robbed of sleep until they make a person stumble. And such are the people here that are being mentioned by Mika. That they devise wickedness in their beds and they wake up in the morning to perform it. When you hear of such words, you begin to wonder, I'm not like those guys. I'm much better. But this is the word of the Lord to the people of God. And Mika has been sent to bring them. It's a picture of how man can tend to be carefully planning and scheming to do evil. Whether it be against other men as it is here, whether they are friends, they are people, employees or clients, whoever it is, but that devising of wickedness, that devising of evil, the Lord is not happy about it. Men are prone to wonder, our hearts are prone, prone to wonder, we want to completely turn away from God. And that's the case here. That Going against the ways of God and planning evil is what the Lord is mentioning against the people. Look at verse 2. And these people, they covet fields and seize them, houses and take them away, oppressing a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. 
that act of desiring so strongly the field of another person, and not only desiring because for this one they take it further, you seize them. It's a something that the Lord is not happy about. How could you do that? How could you turn away from the Lord? You are seizing the land, and that means then that you are seizing livelihood. So here he is, the Lord saying that the coveting of fields and the seizing of them, even the houses of people and throwing them out with their inheritance, I am not happy about it. There are no better times to talk about coveting as in our days. The kinds of desires that we have for things we see with people, the kind of notions that we get from all over the things that we hear on TV and radio, Monongoni Poti, Monongoni Wallet, you know, all these things, money is a plot, money is a wallet. Uh, in, the, in the sense of saying that unless you have got what another person has, mm. you, are you are not okay. You are okay until you have amassed the whole world to yourself. You are only alright when you have possessions beyond possession, if I would say that. And the Lord wonders, I would say so. Why? Because what coveting does, it is just another way of saying, I am not content with what the Lord gives. That my heart is not satisfied with what the Lord has offered. And all these people are being charged. And Mika is mentioning to them that war is coming to you. We had a brother who was shouting war the other day very well. He said, war, boy, as, as a cry for help. Now here it is tough. It is war. Danger is coming. There is doom for evildoers. We are in trouble because of the state at which we are in as the people of God. The things that we are doing before God, they are not pleasing. Told against this family, I am devising disaster from which you cannot remove your necks and you shall not walk haughtily, for it will be a time of disaster. Two clear mentions of disaster in the same sentence. That says the Lord. It's a, it's a very good thing to see here. Well, the Lord is saying, I am devising disaster myself. It's like he is coming to recompense or to repay what they had done before him. A disaster that will come upon you and you cannot remove your necks. With, with the neck here, it's a good picture because for these people, they know how they put yokes on animals to work for them. And when an animal is put on a yoke, it cannot turn aside and run away. It's curved, it's, it's engulfed, you're in there. You cannot remove your neck, but you cannot run away from the yoke. And so the Lord is telling them, now the type of disaster that's coming upon you, you will not remove your necks. It's coming on you heavily. And none of you, in his pride or arrogant ways, will be able to rescue themselves. A certainty of coming calamity. It is one thing when you do mischief on a sudden thought. But it's altogether another thing when you've given it careful thought and design, then you execute it. And to the Lord, it's even tougher. Because after watching these ways, his pronouncement of judgment is that he himself will bring a disaster that no one will run away. And verse 4 will say that in that day, when the disaster comes, that day of the Lord, the other people will take up a tongue song against you. And you'll be forced to say, we are utterly ruined. He has chosen it from me to an apostate. An apostate is a stranger. He allots our fields. And that this day did come. It did come when the Babylonians struck in and they were taken away into captivity. That day of the Lord did come. This Mika is mentioning here. And that these people no longer had their say in their land. It was not for them again to place lines on their land and say you can occupy this portion. It is a stranger who would take up the land and for them they would be taken up into activity. The kind of yoke that he is mentioning that you will not remove yourselves from. A time of disaster. A time of strange happenings before the people. And you know, it does happen that the guys who feel most secure in times of prosperity are the ones who land in most despair in times of calamity. So when the oppressors here are coveting fields, are oppressing the people, the Lord is watching and saying that your day is coming and all of you will be in one basket. You will face the consequences of my judgment. I would say to us, brethren, that it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. And especially so when you have turned away from Him. 
be it in our small ways, be it in our relations with one another, be it in our conduct and work of Christianity, whatever it is that leads us or has led us away from God, it's time we considered it and threw it out. So that we will turn back to Him. Because He, the Lord, as you can see, watches our thoughts. He watches our wickedness. He watches our devising and our plans. And the Lord talks about coveting and he punishes that because it's against his law, his very Ten Commandments. And an amazing thing is if at any one time men want to turn away from God and he turns against them, you do not want to be an enemy of God. You can see what he's saying and pronouncing serious judgment. And when he says in that day, we also know that there is a day that would come and it would come for us. Another final day of the Lord that we ought to consider and think, how are we getting ready for that day? Because we need to be on the right things with him. We need to be on his side, if I would say so. The Lord avenges, and he's a consuming fire. But we ought to live our lives then in ways that would honor him, other than turning away from him. Our way of life and living needs to glorify him. And yes, we need to turn to God. We need to turn to look to Him through Christ. So thinking about these things, wickedness, coveting, going against God, turning away from Him, they need to challenge us today in our way of living a Christian walk with the Lord, that we should turn to the Lord with all our hearts.